a hovercraft. Hi, my lovelies, it's Rebecca Rogers. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you're here. And today, I'm in my natural habitat. I'm in school. No, I'm not going back to teaching. Don't even play with me. But what better place to do a little bit of learning and have fun while doing it? Just to be clear, we only have fun when learning here. It's a rule. So today, my friends at the Hovercraft Project are gonna teach me how to make a hovercraft and how it all works. So let's get started. Okay, first thing that we need to do is we need to take this polyester like tart material and we need to cut it out into a circle. Now, two things real quick. The reason that we're using this little tart material is that it's pretty indestructible. It's not gonna break it, that's what we need. So this is gonna go on the bottom of our hovercraft and that's why we need it to stay intact and not get ripped. We don't want a crash landing or anything. Now we're gonna cut this tarp into a circle and the shape doesn't really matter. The reason that we're doing a circle is because that's the shape that our template is. If you have another template that's another shape like a square or a triangle, that would be fine. We just have circles today. Now there's a few different ways that you could find the center of this circle or the center of this tarp so that we can make the circle. Like for example, you could use the tape measure, you could find the radius or the circumference to the diameter, all the math things. We know I don't math very well, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a method that I learned when I was in school. So when we were young in art class, we always learned about folding paper, hot dog wise, or hamburger wise, or things like that. And if you fold it so many times, you can find the center of a piece of paper. And once you folded your sheet twice, it needs to be twice, not once, not three times, twice, you need to check the corners. There are gonna be some corners that have two flimsy pieces. You don't want that side. You wanna find the corner where everything is connected, that's gonna be the center of your sheet. So we're gonna take a little marker and we're just gonna mark the corner right there and we know that when we unfold it, that's gonna be the center of our circle or our tarp, because it's not a circle yet. So now that we have our center, we wanna make as big of a circle that we possibly can. And I'm sure there are a lot of ways that you could do this also. What I'm going to use is some string and a marker. I don't really know what TV show I remember this from. I just, it might have been some crime fighting show where they're finding the radius of a serial killer kind of thing. You know what I'm talking about. It might have been from something like Criminal Minds when Spencer Reed is trying to calculate a, a serial killer's hunting zone or something like that. But you take the string and I am gonna have to put it on this marker and tie it around. Try really hard to make a knot because your girl struggles. I'm gonna tie the string to the end of the marker and I'm going to try really hard to make this a straight line. I want it as tight as possible so that as I'm going around in a circle, it stays the same length and that'll make my circle. We're gonna have to try it a few times because you know, I don't really know how much string I need to be holding on to. We can try it and oh no, this one is clearly way too long or way too large. I'm gonna have to start again and go a little shorter on the string and try it a few times just until we can really figure it out. And if we mess up, that's okay because mistakes happen and nothing has to be perfect the first try and it's just like life. You can keep trying, fail, try again and as long as you get to the final destination, that's really all that matters. So after numerous tries, we finally have a circle and it looks questionable. I mean, it's not perfect as we said, life never usually is and that's okay. But we do have the end result, we have the circle, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this out. our giant circle, we need to make some little circles. And why we need these little circles is a little complicated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the circles and then show you why we need these little circles. So for a perfect balance while you're flying through the year, we're gonna wanna make six circles in our little tarp and they're gonna need to be five inches in diameter, I believe. Five inches? Five centimeters, just kidding. It's all right, math. I know everyone not in America is just rolling their eyes at me, but it's okay. Listen, I didn't choose to use inches and centimeters, okay? It's not my choice. Get off my back. I don't, this is what we have. Also, we wanna make sure that these circles are about six inches away from our center point that we made a little earlier. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take our tape measure and we are gonna measure out six inches from our center. We're gonna put a little dot and we're very lucky that this nifty little tape measure is about five centers in diameter, exactly what we need. So we're going to make sure the little dot right there lands perfectly on our little dots that we've made on our 
tarp and we're just gonna trace it. Hope to goodness that my hands aren't covered in blue ink because these aren't washable. This is a Sharpie. Spoiler alert, we were not successful. All right, we have six circles. I'm not gonna lie, I was trying to measure them all, trying to make it symmetrical. I almost made eight, but it's okay. We know how to count. I can do that much math, okay? Now we're gonna have to cut these circles out of the tarp. When I was in school, I learned that a way that you can do this is to fold the paper and kind of make a little snip and just kind of go at it from there. Please, for the love of goodness, if you're doing it at home, do not start from the end, because then you're just gonna rip a hole in your tarp and you're just gonna have to start over. All right, so now we have our tarp. We have the holes, if you will. Time to put it on our little template. So our template that we have is a blue disc, and what this does is it provides a flat surface for you to be able to sit on the hovercraft. There's a lot of different little pieces, so I'm gonna tell you exactly what all of them are. So this little thing in the center, this is the rubber knob, and what it does is it has a screw on the other side that lets us connect and screw in our tarp to the blue disc. And you can see it on the other side, it just has a little screwing thing to make sure that it stays in place right there and that it doesn't go anywhere. This little doohickey right here, this is called the camera. No, it does not take pictures. No, you cannot go onto Instagram with it. It is just called the camera because it is. And we're gonna use this little knob to attach our little leaf blower. That's where we're gonna get the power in the air to kind of lift us off the ground. So what this does is we place the leaf blower right here and it blows air into here, which goes into the bottom side of our tarp. And that's where these little holes are gonna come in. The little holes kind of provide an escape for the air. If we were to just blow all that leaf blower air into this, it would explode. We don't want that, that's not safe. And it also wouldn't let us hover anywhere. So these little holes are gonna allow the air to safely kind of travel through while still keeping enough air in the hovercraft to let you float. And the last thing on our blue disc assembly is the compression ring. That is this thing, it has a little clamp that kind of lets you Hit the safety knob, children locks, also Rebecca locks. Ah! So the compression ring honestly just either latches or unlatches, and what it does is it lets you move the skirt around, and then once you lock it, it just kind of, oh goodness. what I do? Get parental help with this part. Parental guidance suggested, watch your fingers. The compression lock honestly just keeps the skirt in place, so if you want it a little looser, a little tighter, this will just keep your skirt exactly where you want it to go. Or your tarp. We've been interchanging tarp and skirt. It started out as a tarp, and now we're just kind of calling it a skirt. Listen, things are named weird things, okay? I, I don't come up with the names. That's just, it is what it is. Now the question is, do we want a loose tarp, or do we want a tight tarp? Let's find out. <laughs> very bouncy and very wavy, like I could feel it moving under me. I could feel how the air from the leaf blower was able to escape a little too easily and that kind of stopped me from moving and having the best time that I could have. So we're gonna try and tighten it up a little bit and see what we can do. I'm so excited to try the tight skirt. I just wanna go fast. There's so many things that we could do. There are so many games that we could play with this thing. So while we are tightening the skirt and getting it situated, let me know what kind of fun things that you think that we could accomplish on this hovercraft. What kind of games could we play? What kind of activities and adventures could we go on? And what other creators would we want to play these games with? Fingers crossed. <laughs> skirt 100% that's the like optimal hovercrafting experience that was so much fun oh my gosh I wish you guys could have experienced that that was just amazing this is the kind of stuff that I love I love learning and I love teaching I love making learning fun 
fun. That's how it should always be. Whether it's science or social studies or literally whatever it is, you can make anything into something fun and enjoyable and that's so important to me. So if you guys have other examples of fun things we can learn about, tell me. I love doing this kind of stuff and if you enjoyed it, I would love to make more of these for you guys, so just let me know. And as I said before, I feel like there's so much potential with these hovercrafts, so many games we can play. You guys are probably more creative than me. Let me know, what kind of games do you think we can play with these? And what creator should we play with? I feel like I'm gonna have to call Ben and tell him to come down here. He always beats me in Mario Kart, so I feel like I need to beat him in a hovercraft race. I can do it, Ben, don't look at me like that. I can already feel your eyes rolling behind your computer as you watch this. Be scared. But I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video. I know it's a little bit different, but I had a lot of fun and I hope you guys did too. But I'll see you guys next week. Bye, my lovelies. Mwah.